Welcome back, friends. Today, we are talking about how you deal with the fates and how you can progress the fear of the fates so that you can actually manifest a different kind of experience for yourself. Well, friends, it's been a while since I've been here. I have been steeped in doing shorts. Um, summer's always really, really busy on the farm. And also I have another project that I'm working on for you guys uh, that probably won't be announced for a couple of weeks, but it is really juicy. However, today we're going to talk about the fates and how to move through that so that you can really, truly um, see the sequence of events in your life through a different um, perspective, through a different lens. So let me remind you, again, I stick to Raw's original material. I do my best not to change any of the material because um, there's a frequency there. And I believe that the the frequency is designed to hold us in a space so that we can move through the shift into 2027 through through our truest version of ourselves, where the conditioned mind no longer is holding us back, but we've now shifted that mentality and that mind so that it's actually working as an ally for us versus against us. So that's why I stay as close to the original material as possible. All right. So how do you deal with the fates? So if you look at the Rei Vai Ching book and you grab the Rei Vai Ching book and you take a look at the 30th gate, that's what we're going to concentrate on today. However, we're also going to look at the entire sensing stream because the human experiential way begins in the 41st gate and it ends in the 35th gate. So anybody that's listening to this through the audio, um, you... Um, hopefully you can follow along uh, visually in your mind as I will to have a PowerPoint presentation. So if you want to pop onto YouTube and just take a look at the PowerPoint presentation, you're welcome to do that as well. So in the 30th gate, the fear of the fates resides there and it's stuck kind of in the middle of our human ex experiences. Uh, we have this worry and stress, and we're always worried, like, are, are the fates going to pull the rug out from underneath of us? Are we going to get punished? All these different things happen through the conditioning field and how we um, how we are conditioned to look at the fates, that we're always going to be punished. And it's very interesting to watch that happen. But I'm going to share my screen right now, and we are going to talk about the full human experiential way, and I'm going to include in there the, the fear of the fates. So let's dive in. All right, I just had to bring up my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So what you're looking at here is what we call the human experiential way in human design. Begins in the 41st gate, moves up to the 30, shifts over to the 36, and then to the 35. Now, first, we want to talk about the 41st gate. The 41st gate is the start codon. And when you're looking at this stream, this is the sensing circuit. There's a few keynotes that you want to be leaning into while you're taking a look at this. One of them is abstract. The other one is sequencing. When we look at the abstract circuitry in human design, there is this sequencing that takes place. Our, we, we think our memories are like, you know, grasping everything and, and we're able to have like instant recall, but really how our minds really do operate are, <laughs> they kind of like sequence of events. And if you look at the, the 64 to the 47, what it shares in there is, the 47 actually is like the cutting room floor where everything's kind of cut up and then the sequence of events can start to can start to be put back together. So when we're looking at sequencing, understand that not everything that took place in the experience, it might be stored if you are a right minded person and it might be stored if you have a right brain. However, pulling that sequence of events up is not always going to look linear. It's not designed to. The abstract process is not linear. That is the whole point of it. It operates in cycles. It operates in sequences. 
So these are all things that you can put into your, your keynoting as you're doing the abstract um, keynotes on any of the abstract um, gates and channels. So how do you deal with the fates? Well, we're first going to start on the 41 because the 41 is this energy to contract. The 41 is the start codon. It begins everything. Okay, all human experience begins here. Okay, all human experiences begin here. And the 41st gate is a fuel to contract down to one feeling, or it is a pressure, an adrenalized pressure to react. And that reaction looks like fight, 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 flight, freeze, or fawn. And those reactions take place when the root center is undefined or the defined root hasn't been deconditioned. What do I mean by that? Well, if the the mind is still running the show and making decisions and you shoulda, woulda, coulda, hurry, blah, 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 talking about all that, that's conditioning. And that can still happen with a defined root center. So with that 41st gate, what you want to take a look at is, are you expecting something out of the experience or, or can you just sit in the anticipation of the experience? These are really key questions to ask yourself, because if there's an expectation of what the outcome is going to be more times than not, you're never going to feel satiated the experience is going to happen and you're going to feel like you didn't get what you needed out of it. Now, if you anticipate it and you anticipate that the sequence of events are going to be perfect for you to, you know, experience or learn from totally different energy. Okay. Expectations can kill the human experience. Okay. So when we take a look at contraction, you want to pull in one feeling and recognize one feeling at a time. This is something that Ra also said deeply around manifestors and um, manifesting generators is contract down to one thing at a time. Don't try to disperse your energy field too much because that gets very overcomplicated. Now, projectors usually are really good at this, so are reflectors, kind of just staying on track with one thing at a time. But with the manifestor and the manifesting generator, they have a tendency to like whew, disperse their energy too much and it's incorrect, okay? So contract down to one thing, one, one feeling, one experience, just one thing. Get really good at understanding your emotional um, process in your nervous system. If it's always in a reactionary mode, the nervous system is most likely um, overtaxed and then causing a lot of inflammation in the body. If the nervous system is able to just process one feeling at a time and lean into that and really move through that process, totally different experience. Okay. So contracting down to one feeling and just be aware, what is that feeling? And is it reactionary? If it is, then you want to just tap back in and go, okay, hold on a minute. I don't need to react here. Reaction again, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Okay. You want to take a look at that. Now we're going to move up to today's conversation and that is the 30th gate. So if we take a look at the 30th gate through the Rei Vai Ching and you look at the blue line of the 30th gate, I didn't put it here, my apologies. Here is the blue line. Freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate. Okay. Oh, I'm going to read that again. If you want to write it down or pause, great. Freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate. So we are all limited 
um, to our designs. There's a limitation that happens there. I've talked about that quite a bit in the 60th gate. Uh, it's not good, bad, right, wrong, whatever. You're also limited to your physical body. Now, I get it. Medium, psychics, intuition, um, astral travel. We feel like we leave our bodies. Totally. Can do that. 100%. But you're limited to this body. You're here to animate this particular body. And that is the limitation that is available. That is the fate that you have been, you know, if you want to say if it was a contract, Ross says not, that you don't make any decisions, you're coming in, there's no contracts, you you can make that decision for yourself. Um, but your energy decided that, yeah, I'm going to come into this particular um, vessel and I'm going to animate it. Okay. So freedom recognizes an illusion. I love it when Ra kind of does double speak because the other thing he also says is that once we accept our design, once we accept the limitation of the design, we are free. We don't have to try to be anybody else. We don't have to try to compete with anybody else. We don't have to um, have this comparative mind always happening. Now that allows you freedom. Okay, so now we want to look at how do you deal with the fates, right? Because this is a conditioning field. This is where uh, so many people get caught up in being scared of the fates and being scared of the fates and not moving forward, not moving forward into an experience because it's like, well, what if? What if? always operating through that what if, that reactionary mode, fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and, and never really anticipating, uh, you know, just being in the experience. And that's what the abstract energy field begs of us. Same with the right variable. It begs of us to just be in an experience. Okay. So let's take a look at the, the six lines of how to deal with fates. Now, where you want to look at for this information is in your profile. So I'm a 1-3. I also have the 30th gate, but it's the earth, my personality earth. So it's a part of my, my profile already. But first, if the 30th gate is defined anywhere in your body graph, you want to look at that line first. And then you want to look at the profiles because this is how you're going to deal with the fates, how your profile is going to meet life, how your role is going to meet life. It's going to meet the fates, okay? And the fate that is yours. And that is your design. And you're meeting other people and they have their designs, okay? And now you get to meet them. And when everybody's in acceptance and not trying to be the other person, now we're playing the game and we're participating in a totally different way. We don't have expectations of the other person. We're just anticipating that the experience is going to be perfect for both of us. It's going to have this sense of excellentism for both of us. Okay. So the six line. So if you want to take a look at your profile, do you have a, a six in your profile or anywhere defined 30.6 in your design. This is enforcement, okay? So this is the discipline to maintain right action. You are very good at accepting your limitation and using your imagination and then demanding that the fates bring you the experience, bring the experience to you, okay? Anytime we're looking at the six line, we talk about, you know, the sixes moving from the roof face, coming back or onto the roof and then coming off the roof. Well, you know where they're going after they get off the roof? <laughs> they're going to the horizon because six lines, six colors, six tone. It's all about leaning into the acceptance, okay? The acceptance, going to the shoreline and just looking out at the horizon. They are the transitionary aspect, always. 
Six lines are always the transitionary aspect. So what a six line is designed for is to be a role model and to maintain that right action in themselves, which through that right action is an acceptance. Now, all of a sudden, there's the acceptance of the design. So now they can feel free. Okay, that's what the six, 30.6, if you have a six in your profile, understand that that's how you are designed to lean in and, you know, bust through the fear of the fates. It truly is to be yourself. It truly is to accept that the experiences that are designed for you are going to come to you. Just think about standing on a shoreline. The waves come. The boats come, people come, fish come, the wind comes. You know, you want to be watching that, what's coming towards you so that you can stand in the role model energy. Okay. Now, if we look at the five, the five is all about irony, the recognition and dedication to transitory goals. Each new feeling brings back an old feeling before progress can take place. So what is the irony? You must deal with the old feelings, okay? Hypnotherapy is really, really good for this. So you can progress into the new experience. So fifth lines, what do we know about them? Like, let's just take a look at this, right? <laughs> the irony is, Fifth lines are the messenger, and they are so scared that their seductive message is going to end up having them be lynched in the town square. So how can you progress? How can you allow for those old, um, scary feelings to allow you to show up, okay, and share your message with the people that, you know, need that? Okay. The other ir ir ironic thing here is that many people say, oh, you know, the fifth lines they're projected onto. That is a true story. However, that projection allows you to call out the people that need to be called out. Because what they're doing is they're telling you what their expectations are. And what is this human experiential way? What is it asking you for? Lean into the anticipatory feeling. Lean into just being. So you as a fifth line, the irony is that recognition and dedication to transitory goals. Things move, things shift, things change. However, how do people get stuck in cycles and never progress through a cycle? Expectation. So now you as a fifth line, poof, you bust through that expectation. And now what you're doing is you are honoring your fate. Because that's really, <laughs> how do you bust through the fear of the fates? You honor your design. You honor what you have already been given to represent. If we look at the four, burnout. This is a part of all fourth lines, fourth colors, fourth tones, is burnout, okay? So there's an unrealistic pace that begs misfortune. Oh, so Leanne, I thought you said that there was no misfortune with the fates. Let's just take a look here. The highly energized feelings that you end up burning out the opposing forces in your network so progress can take place. Yeah. You're going to need to give yourself compassion and you're going to need to allow yourself to rest pull out of your network, but you are designed to externalize to your network. And what that externalization is going to do is it's going to burn out the opposing forces. Sounds absolutely amazing. Get those people out of the way. So allow yourself rest periods and feel those highs and lows, okay, so that you can move into a new experience. So if you have a fourth line in your profile or a 30.4 anywhere in your design, you want to look at this. Burnout, what you're actually really truly designed for 
is to burn out those opposing forces. And because there's this capacity for you to actually have an unrealistic pace, guess what happens? You burn other people out from that pace. Can you be burnt out? Yes, if you're not operating through the correct decision-making, if you're not pulling out of the network when you're designed to pull out of the network and allow yourself compassion and time to relax, you will be burnt out. But your externalization is actually designed to get other people out of the way so that your um, network can actually take advantage of the opportunities that are available within it, okay? Resignation of the third line. What do we know about third lines? Well, they're here to pivot, trial and error. They're really good at adapting. They're anarchists. They love to tear shit down and, and allow it to be rebuilt differently because it knows third lines, they know. <laughs> they totally know what doesn't work, right? And the beautiful part of a third line truly knows you cannot do it like anybody else, okay? Resignation, accept the acceptance of what is. If the feeling is positive or negative, you lean into the acceptance of whatever's present, okay? Lean into whatever is present. So if you have a third line in your profile or 30.3 anywhere in your chart, understand that how you best deal with the fates and let go of the fear of the fates is to accept whatever feeling is present, okay? Now, if we look at the second line, what do we know about second lines? We know that they are designed to be called out, that they are hermits, they are natural at their gifts, okay? And here, what we know is that it is about pragmatism, pragmatism, the balance between extremes, okay? So you become aware of the feelings that demand your energy, okay? You become aware of those. What does that demand? That's the call, knock, 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 I'm demanding your energy. And you may not be able to, to let it go. You may not be able to let go of the, that demanding, that demanding on your energy. So be really aware of that. Who is calling you out? When the fates are calling you, when your design is calling you, when other people are calling on your design, recognize there's a demand for that energy. And you then get to use your decision-making to feel free in your design, to let your natural gifts and your talents be available, okay? Now, if it's a no and you don't want to use your energy on that demand, okay? Sorry, I said you weren't able to let them go. That's incorrect. That's for the next one. You, you know the difference, okay, as a second line. I, I apologize for this, pragmatism. You know, you, you are aware of the feeling of that demand for your energy, okay? And those you are not to waste your time on. So my apologies for, the, for that, okay? The balance between the extremes of the pragmatism is that you become aware of the feelings that demand your energy and those you are not going to waste your time on. That's the call, okay? That is the call. People call, they knock on your door, they know your gifts, they see your gifts, okay? They really want to pull your gifts out, okay? You're, you're projecting out to them this natural capacity, but you're really shy. You're super shy and you're like, oh, you know, you're worried about the fates, you're worried that people are going to, you know, talk talk about you because you're so natural at it. You're, you're nervous around that. Now you will know. That demand for your energy, are you going to use that demand, come out and use your gifts, or are, do you know that it's not worth your time, that you're not going to waste your energy on something that isn't correct for you, okay? Now we get to composure. 
balance in the face of disorder. So stability of feelings, no matter what is happening. And this is the sentence that I read for the two, and it, it, it's actually designed for the one. And you may not be able to let them go. Okay. First lines may not be able to let go of feelings. So just feel them. Now, how do you let that feeling go? Even though it says you may not be able to let them go. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it in your nervous system. The nervous system only needs 90 seconds to feel it and, and let it move on. So that composure activity, think about the first lines. What do we know about first lines? Solid foundation, investigator, researcher, right? But they always know, <laughs> they always know that the third lines are going to be testing out their solid foundation. So they're always researching. They're always, um, you know, putting mortar in, in between all the bricks, keeping that solid foundation, right? With the next set of research, the next things that are going on. So here it's about stability in the face of disorder because that third line's going to come in and it's going to say, we're tearing this down. We're tearing this down. Rebuild the solid foundation. So this is about being stable, even though there's always disorder because of the trial and error process. The human experiential way is beautiful for this, right? Like, 8 billion people experiencing, if we all went skydiving the exact same minute, guess what's going to happen? We're all going to have a totally different experience. So lean into that. Lean into how you are designed to deal with fates. Okay. Now, if we move on to the 36, well, the 36 is about crisis. So every time, we, you know, let go, we lean into our designs, we trust the fate of our design to show up. Now we move up to the 36. And what the 36 truly tells us is that when we feel nervous, when we feel like we're inadequate, when we feel like, you know, this next social experience or this next sexual experience or this next movement you know, towards progress, it feels like a crisis, okay? It feels like a crisis. Why does it feel like a crisis? Because we've never done it before. And when we haven't done something before, there's that nervous energy there. Allow that nervous energy. Just like I said, right from the 41, 30, 36, allow for the nervous energy. Allow your um, nervous system to just come to a space of regulation. And now what happens is we then lean into the manifestation and the progress. So this whole process is called the sensing circuit, but it also is everything about the hunger process in the human design, you know, body. When we're hungry, we don't feel satiated. So we want to satiate ourselves. We get hungry for an experience. Now, desire is built right into the 30th gate as well that desire to have an experience. So now really pay attention that desire can actually be a shadow aspect, okay? Desire can be a shadow aspect if we are um, yearning and yearning and yearning for something that actually we're not designed for, okay? For yearning to be someone different. I hear this quite a bit, actually, and I watch it in lots of Facebook groups. Oh, I wish I didn't have this. Oh, it's so hard to have that. Oh, I wish I didn't have this channel. It's so hard to cope with this channel. You're not here to cope with it. You're here to express it. And if your conditioned mind is telling you that it's hard, of course it's going to be hard. The minute that you decondition that conditioned mind, guess what happens? Now you accept your fate. Now you represent your design. And you can manifest a totally different life. You can progress through your experiences in a completely different manner. That's what the 35 tells us, okay? So hopefully you got a lot out of that. You understand how you are designed to deal with fates, okay? So throw a comment below and, and let me know uh, what is uh, your profile and how did you recognize yourself in, in the way that you are designed to deal with the fates? And just a happy reminder, 
The self-study and the mentorship are still available, and so is the human design business integrated solutions, the VIP coaching that I do, all available. Want to build a business? Let's do it. Want to learn human design in a way that you can really keynote it and get in and have a gr group of people that you want to uh, you know, play with and uh, bring your wisdom and share your knowledge? We have all of that. So uh, join me join us and all right have fun accept your fate and lean into the perfection of you <laughs>